complaining, it's raining, raining, raining. So here's what's going on today. I uh, brought this, this a motor. This is a, uh, daggone it. I can't think of the brand and motor. I think it's, a, is it a Vickers? It ain't, ain't a Vickers, it's a Parker. I think it's a, it's a Parker V style V12. Does that sound right? It's a Parker V12, I think, style motor. Uh, but it is a uh, it is a uh, bin axis uh, 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 actual piston, I think. Uh, straighten me out if I'm wrong, anybody. It's a bin axis actual piston. It's a, the V style, the V the V style motor. It's the 150 cubic inch motor, I believe. Yeah, uh, it's a big motor. It's a big hydraulic motor. And what this is, it runs a saw blade on the cat boom, and uh, the seals went out of it, and we kept running it. And it's oozing oil. It, we ran like a year and a half oozing oil out the saw blade seal, which is a bad idea. Bad idea. Y'all got this set up, and y'all's logging operation. Don't let it leak. I it was what I done is it washed out the and I had that bearing carrier the square things a bearing carrier sorry I'm jumping around square things a bearing carrier there look at me pull it apart there yeah full of goop look at all the oil in it but the motor the way it's designed is a motor it slips into that bearing carrier and runs that bearing carrier and that bearing carrier is going to carry the saw that's how it's supposed to be if everything's all happy and good but the back the seal went out and it'd been leaking oil in there for so long it washed the grease out that i had in there and then it started wearing on the uh internal parts because the oil was uh 46 and that 46 ain't enough lubricant for what what i got going on there so the bearings is out shafts are boogered i gotta put seal in the bearing the seal in the motor and i got to uh put new bearings and saw shaft in that box i'm working on there that bearing carrier so let's get the bearing carrier fixed first then we'll uh go to the uh is it mvf why, why can't i why can't i yes I'll, I'll 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 put it on this i'll put it on the vision I can't, I can't for some reason I can't think of what style motor that is but uh, it's the same style it's the same family motor that's on the the saw bar on the Dendin. -den. the saw bar on the Dendin -den is a 40, 40 millipede or whatever they metric kind of crap they check in motors on I think it's Sweden or Switzerland is where them things are made but it's metrified so it's all metric numbers now I think it's a Millipede or something. I don't. I don't know. Some kind of metric mess that they that they judge the size of them. cubic centimeter. Now cube cc's. Yeah, they got naked. They're gonna put it on. Good deal. What's that? Right I'm starting on that. This is a saw motor. <clears throat> this is what a saw blade goes on out in the woods. Big saw, six foot saw blade. Okay. This is a tapered shaft. It's got a collar. It slides up on and gets tight. Yeah. The collar is big like this. The blade goes on. Sandwiches it on. Yeah. It winds up speed. Well, to carry the weight, it's got this bearing carrier. Inside oh, wow. that's two ball bearings, three big ball bearings. Uh, so it takes up the strain of salt. But what drives it is this motor. 
just the hydraulic motor. So this carries weight in that drive. All of it's old, wore out. So I put seals went out of that because the bearing was too floppy. Yeah. And then got the leaking oil in here. Still had oil. And then it got in the shafts all watered out where it's loose. So that's a tough piece of wood. Right? Yeah, it's, and it has to be. It's carrying a lot of strain. Yeah. That's basically how all that goes. Change saws no more, by God. I don't mean the fucking saw won't stand that good. If that fucking saw stand that good, I'd give her a hand. Dirk over Michael, see if he's gonna hammer him saw. We can find somebody fucking hammer him. It's gonna run out. Well, they quit hammering down south? No, I hit him like I thought was a month. Rick called him. Didn't hammer him. He's laying down. When you said to get my hammer, hammer him go. Make this thing. I don't know. Seals out of the inside of them a long time ago, so grease can get in there. Oh, look.
Now I'm gonna bust down this motor because I gotta get the shaft pulled out. Check the insides, I'm gonna clean it and check the bearings lash and all that stuff in the inside and see what kind of shape the needle does. Needle bearings are, why, 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 why do I think it's weird saying needle? Roller bearings. Check the roller bearings on the inside and make sure everything looks good. There's are taper bearings and there's kind of like an axle hub type of thing. I can't get this smack loose. There's a, uh, it's full of oil in there, but Tater don't know that. I didn't think that a hydraulic motor would be full of oil, but I found that out real right quick. But, uh, in making a mess here in three, two, and one, or something like that. Three, two, three, two. And let's do this countdown like everybody gets them right. Three, two, and one. Yeah, boy. Come on, Tater. Make a mess on the place. Look at this. Watch this. Come on. There it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. oh it's all oh, the, the humanity. <laughs> but anyways, so I got to pull it down, and the shaft is screwed, and I can't get the shaft comes with the gear, with the the little I don't know what you call them, the, the cavities that the pistons go in, and all that stuff. So there's quite a bit to that shaft, and it comes from I think Sweden is where this is made. And of course, Putin's up there slinging his wee whopper around, so I think it screwed up the delivery. And between that and Corona, I think everything's all screwed up. So. I don't think you can hardly get a shaft for these now. And they might have discontinued this, the SV or whatever, V12 series or whatever it is. And uh, it's hard to get a shaft for it. So I'm going to try to use retaining compound. I'm going to try to get it all together and, and slide some retaining compound in that shaft. And hopefully to take up some of the wear that's gone on this thing because of what we've done with the letting the seal go out and run it continuing to run it you know and then i'm gonna take all this stuff apart and clean it i don't know why i decided i had to take it all apart but for some reason it might i don't know for some reason i want to take everything apart and clean it up and look at it and see how everything is but uh most mostly what i'm doing here is putting a seal in it and checking a few things yeah it's mostly what we're doing with this now i wanted to get on here and talk to y'all had some good daggone comments on the video with the debarker repair i asked you all watch me be on that shaft yeah, there you go bugger it up tater love it put it on youtube bugger it up and then put it on youtube oh, there it is there it goes <laughs> i wanted to break in here and take this opportunity to tell you all thank you for the information stuff you gave me in the comments on this uh, debarker welding video we done the other day uh, to help me through some of this mess I got. And I wanted to highlight some of the comments I got. I don't know what better way to do it than this. Let me start out with this first one, Danny G. He writes, while this mechanism may seem complex, you must simplify how you look at it to get it right. Not knowing the dimensions of all the parts and knowing you want to make minimal change i would look at the mechanism in this way consider two different positions the thrown position catch position and the catch position from the thrown position position the log cam in the thrown position just below the bull wheel two mark the position three position the log cam in the catch position mark the position five Move the log cam to the midpoint between the catch position and thrown position, which would be, I assume he's thinking 90 degrees. Adjust the length of the rod between the crank and the log cam such that the angle between the rod and the thrown rod and the crank are the same. Close to 90 degrees if possible. Move the cylinder rod eye to the left edge of the bell crank and below the pivot to get as close to 90 degrees as possible. Using the same base position of the cylinder. Following this procedure should allow you to keep most of your attachment points and provide the greatest speed variation at the proper points. Which was great because I was having a little issue with torque versus load speed uh, with the way ours is set up. Uh, 
there's quite a few things wrong and I was trying to disguise it with torque versus load speed. Now another one was DLK Hey, I'm seeing it differently. Why don't you run it from the bottom pushing up cylinder? All that overhead is just complicating things but when a, any again I'm pretty simple in regards to fillers you're right it's learning from mistakes. DLK Hey, the way he's saying is take out all that mechanism and crap I had in there and I'm with him I'm actually with him on this I think a lot like he's thinking now we had another one here and I guess I missed the name but this was on the rods I love 6010 I don't know what 5p 5 pound rod for 50 I don't know what that means for roots and welding rusty stuff hurry up hill downhill whatever but you must have an ACDC welder also run your 7018 reverse polarity helps tremendously uphill and overhead 7014 kind of sucks i think i used to do a lot of welding 15 years ago on sheet piling and tie backs bracing and all we used was a 7018 and a 50 town box in the main mid whatever biggest help you can could do for yourself on thicker weldments well i missed that let me jump in here oh this is wayne tharp the sheer abuse this machine takes daily and for all these decades always blows me away i would think the metal would all fatigue at this point then to throw in kind of what scene touched on this his comment to ever be able to finesse it with the different variables of log size weight makes my brain stutter split a belt and then melt completely <laughs> good luck and have faith tater you'll figure this out thank you so much wayne wayne let me tell you all wayne has been very good to us in this channel he's come up and he's done he's recorded video and let me use it uh some of the stuff i use on my intros and outros is wayne's footage wayne has played a very big part in this channel and i would appreciate anybody as you see comments and stuff going through in and out and all this sort of stuff if you see wayne on there please give him a little bit of pat on the back because he is a very selfless person he's helped his channel out a whole bunch now let me jump in here the next one we got oh al al said al's real smart he's a good sawmiller al says the hmd cd barker i used to run had a chain driven kicker from a hydraulic motor it loaded a 30-foot deck from a metal circular mill also hauled my own logs of debarker had to hustle up hustle to keep up oh man i'm telling you i bet he did when you're trying to run loader in debark a lot of them do that any smaller mills but whew, that is a full day <clears throat> and he's got a youtube channel y'all can check out out sometimes robert says as my brother the pro welder told me years ago it's welding don't get too fussy you're not building a jet engine <laughs> and his other line Get good with that welder or you'll get really good with a grinder. <laughs> Wait, you fix it even better. No mill downtime. That's the main thing. That was very good, Robert. Thank you. That I wrote that down in my book. Get good with a welder or you'll get really good with a grinder. I wrote that down in my book. That That is helpful. All right, so we got uh, my seal kit, my chart, and I'm going to start putting this back together. I uh, already started sliding the stuff back together on that on the driven gear there. So I'll set you all up and we'll put it on time lapse so I can listen to my audio book and we'll get back at it. Come in. Now, scene wrote, I've never been around one using air cylinders on a stop and load. Mills are run hydraulic so you can gently and feather the arms when putting the big logs on the ropes. Or if you or puny wood, you can flick it at the toss into the ropes. No bell crank, no second shaft, cylinder mounts directly bracket on stop and loader. Air cylinders on the kickers to exit the debarker, but not to load it. Which seen, I think he said later that he, yeah, he seen that we was using hydraulic, but it's just a slower hydraulic that we're actually running. It's not a real good setup. Nothing I could brag on. And this last one, oh, he said edit. Just watch into the look, look looser, closer. You are running hydraulics, sorry, yes. Direct attachment to the bracket. Eliminate the extra pieces and you should be fine. If arm elevation is a problem on smaller wood, you can always have your rolls 
turning to ride the log onto them. Yes, and we already do that some, see. But yes, 100% agreed with him. I, it, 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 I pretty much 100% agree with him. But I wanted to show this on here, and I wanted to thank you guys for playing a part on, on the channel here. That and, 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 and helping me. That, that helps me a bunch. Thanks, guys, and uh, thanks for the effort you all put in your comments. Now, back to work here. All right, this turned out to be quite the pickle putting it together because I screwed up a few things a couple of times over and over again. That's why I'm doing it onesies and twos. Instead of onesies, you're doing twosies and threesies putting it together because uh, we was working on crane when I done this video, so I couldn't take it out and show us putting it together and getting it started and running. So we'll have to come back for that. So, well, I'll catch that video here soon. But it sounds great. It, the bearings are quiet. It sounds great. So it will be worth the wait. But uh, I just wanted to say thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks all you do for me, for us, our family, and, and, and the sawmill, you know, supporting us and everything. And, uh, and don't forget to smile. And if you need any uh, gizmos or whatever, go to loggerweight.com and uh, check out the logger wade gear so uh thanks everybody for watching and uh have a good day hit the buttons and don't forget to smile <laughs> later on